There's no question it appears that women and girls are more susceptible to concussion than men and boys. And the question is, why is that? There's, we really don't know the answer to that. Now, some of the theories out there are, one, their neck girth is smaller. What does that mean? So what that means is that most concussions occur because of an impact, but more so than the, even the impact, it's what happens to the neck. The neck either goes like this if it's a linear acceleration or a linear impact. So if you, someone hits you head on, you have a whiplash type of injury of your neck. Or if someone hits you and doesn't even necessarily hit your head, but your neck twists like that, your brain moves inside your skull when that happens. And so the neck is really important to stabilize the head because if the head is stabilized and doesn't twist violently or stop and move back and forth abruptly, um, the brain is not going to be sloshing around inside the skull. So it may be that women have smaller necks in general and less ability to stabilize the movement, the rapid acceleration of the head and therefore the rapid acceleration of the brain. That's one theory. The other, th the other possibility, of course, is that obviously the internal milieu of the body hormonally is different in a woman, in a girl, than a man, in a boy. And that has an effect on the brain. Um, there are estrogen, for example, and progesterone receptors all over the brain. And so it's possible that the brain itself, and in, in other words, the neurons or the cells that make up the brain, are more vulnerable to an impact at the same force, even without the neck twisting back and forth. So it's either that the brain is more susceptible because of just female physiology and the effects of female physiology on the brain, or, or and, it could be a combination of the two, the neck doesn't stabilize um, the head in space so that any force applied to the head or the neck results in a greater linear and rotational acceleration and therefore potentially greater injury to the brain. Because the brain is really like the yolk inside of an egg. You don't have to crack an egg to actually damage the yolk. If you twist an egg or if you do that to an egg without damaging the shell, the yolk is still moving inside. So that's a good, good way to think about it.